So hi everyone, I'm Raghav, and here in this video we will discuss the first three problems of lead code contest three eight two, and we will discuss the intuition of the fourth problem. So here, this is the first problem of the contest: number of changing keys. In this problem, we have been given a string with zero based indexing, and we have been told that changing a key is defined as using a key different from the last key used. Here is an example. If you have a string like a b, here the first uh, key which you have pressed is a, and after that you have pressed a key b, which is different from the last key. So it will be considered as changing the key. Whereas in case if you press something like b capital b capital b and small b, it is not being considered as changing the key, since whether it is a small b or a capital b, you are um, still uh, pressing the same key that is B. They have actually mentioned this once again that we like for pressing the capital V, we are just using a shift or caps lock. But at the end of the day, we are still using the same key. So it is not going to be considered as a different key. And we have to return the number of times the user changed the key. Let's see one example here A capital A, B capital B, C capital C. So let me open one note. If a string is like this, A capital A, B capital B, C capital C. And we have to tell how many times the user changed the key. Now look at this. From small A to capital A, what would have happened? Earlier the user pressed A. Now the user, user would have either pressed shift plus A or just caps lock and then A. But the key has still be in the same, it is A. So here we would not count anything. From A to B, here the key is changed. The key is different. Here the key was earlier A and now the key is B. So we will say that count was initially zero. Now it is one. After this, you will now again see B and B are both the same keys. So the count will not change. After that capital B to small c, the keys have changed. Here the key was B and now the key is C. So yeah, there is change in keys. And after that, C and capital C, the keys are still the same. So there is no change in the key. So the answer we are having right now is two. And let's see in the example test case. Yeah, they have also given the answer two and they have just given a dry run of like uh, just the same thing which we did here. In the second example test case, they have been using the same key that is A. The character is either capital A or small a. In both the cases, we are using the same key. So there is no change in the key. The string is quite small and uh, it can have a, both uppercase and lowercase characters as we saw in the example test case. And we have to tell the number of times the key changed. So this problem, uh, the logic of the problem is very straightforward that for every two consecutive characters, for every two consecutive characters in the string, characters in the given string, we can just check if both the characters have the same key or different key. So there can be multiple ways of checking, like either you can just um, check if uh, if you have to check out these two characters, you can just say that either both of the character like there can be multiple ways. One of the ways which you can do is just convert all the capital characters to small characters. Uh, like there can be multiple ways, so, but I'm just telling about the one way which I did prefer. I prefer to convert all the capital characters to the small characters. Now I have only small or lowercase characters in the string and uh, the characters which had the same keys would now be equal and the characters which had different keys like these two will have different characters now. So I just have to check if the two characters are equal or not. So for every two consecutive characters after converting the given string into lowercase uh, characters, like all the characters of the given string into lowercase characters, 
I just iterate over the string and for every two consecutive characters, I can just check if they are equal or not. If they are equal or not. So I think that this one is pretty straightforward. It was just some simple implementation based problem. And this is my code. I first of all took the length of the string as in uh, like stored it inside in and uh, initialized a variable answer with zero. Then I traversed over the string and for every character, I just said that, Hey, in case if the character is an uppercase character, this condition is just, this is just checking if the character is uppercase or not. In case if it is, then add 32 to convert it into lowercase character. Just in case if you don't know about sky values, I would suggest you to, um, just search about sky values once and uh, maybe you can just check out how to convert an uppercase character into a low, lowercase character. Just search about this on internet and you would understand that how we are doing this here. After that, either you can run up two or different for loops or just do it in the same way I have done here. In the same for, for loop, I said that, hey, if i is greater than zero, so it is just checking that we are not at the first character right now. If this is not the first character and it is different from the previous character, it means that the key has changed. So we are incrementing answer and at the end, after traversing over the whole uh, loop, we are printing answer, like returning answer. And yep, that's it. So let's move on to the next problem. This is the B problem of the context. Find the maximum number of elements in subset. In the problem, we have been given an array of positive integers. And you need to select a subset of nums, which satisfies the following condition that you can place the selected elements in zero based indexed array such that it follows a pattern. This is the pattern being given to us where K can be any non negative power of two, for example, uh, like this thing. And we have to return the maximum number of elements in a subset that satisfies this condition. Okay, so the problem might be looking way too many people right now. Let me explain it here also. We have been given some array of integers. Like there are some integers in the array with name nums. We have to choose some subset of this array nums. What is a subset? If there are elements like 2, 2, 4, 8 in the array, you can say that 2, 4, 2 or something like this is a subset because every element is coming up in the array. The order in which you write the elements in the subset can be different from the order in which the elements come. Or in case if it lo still looks a little confusing, you can just think as subsets are nothing but some permutation of subsequences. This is some other way of say it, like telling uh, what is a subset. So as an example here, two, two, four is a subsequence, two, two, four is a subsequence. And if you just think about any other permutation of it, like two, four, two or four, two, two, these would be the subsets of the given array. So we have to just tell what can be the largest subset or the subset with maximum number of elements, which follows some given condition. We will see what is this condition, but for now, I hope that this much is clear that we have been given some nums array, like some array, and we have to tell the length of the, we have to tell yeah, the length of the largest possible or longest possible subset which follows some given condition some given condition in the problem now what is the condition the condition is nothing but that subset should look like x x square x raised to the power 4 x raised to the power 8 and so on till some x raised to the power k by 2 x raised to the power k and after that the element should start decreasing 
back again as they were increasing. So eventually, x raised to the power 8, x raised to the power 4, x raised to the power 2, x will come up at the end. You should have this kind of a subset. The subset should look something like this. Let's take an example. If x was, let's say, equal to 2, then the subset, uh, like, sorry, not in the subset. Right now, we are talking about the pattern. So if in this pattern, x was equal to 2 and k was, let's say, equal to uh, maybe 4 or maybe 32, then the pattern looks like 2, 2 raised to the power 2, 2 raised to the power 4, 2 raised to the power 8, 2 raised to the power 16, 2 raised to the power 32, then 2 raised to the power 16, like once you reach the scale, it starts decreasing. 2 raised to the power 4, 2 raised to the power 2, 2 raised to the power 1. We just have to tell um, what is the largest possible subset which can look something like this, where uh, x can be anything, y can be anything, uh, and k can be anything. Like x and k can be anything. So this is the problem. I hope the problem is clear. Now let's look at some very simple observation here. If this, uh, like this is uh, a tricky observation for some people if you have not seen something like this before, but uh, after looking at uh, such observation once or twice, you would start getting this kind of observations. That here you see the number are, numbers are increasing exponentially like if this was 2 raised to the power 4 the next number is the square of the previous number then again the square of the previous one then again the square of the previous one so the numbers are increasing so rapidly you know just try to see even if x was 2 as soon as you reach 2 raised to the power 32 you know that this number cannot be present inside the array why because the array will have elements in the range from 1 to 10 raised to the power 9. Here in the given array, every element will be in the range from 1 to 10 raised to the power 9. So, you know that 2 raised to the power 32, like what is 2 raised to the power 32? It is something like uh, 2 raised to the power 2 into 2 raised to the power 30. I know. And we know that 2 raised to the power 30 is somewhere around 1 e 9. That is 10 raised to the power 9. So this number should be somewhere around 4 into 10 raised to the power 9. Actually even greater than this. Uh, which is definitely out of the range of uh, 10 raised to the power 9. So we know. So we know this thing for a fact now. That this number cannot be present inside the array. So even when the base is as small as 2. In case just, uh, just imagine if the value of x was something larger if x was equal to 5 then 5 raised to the power 32 would also be like for all the uh, values of x which are greater than or equal to 2 you know that uh, x raised to the power 32 would not be present in the array so this kind of a subset cannot be taken out from the array so one thing becomes clear for us now that the largest possible length of the subset would be less than this one. The maximum possible subset, like uh, the maximum possible length of a subset can be inside a subset like this one. x, x raised to the power 2, x raised to the power 4, x raised to the power 8. x raised to the power 16 is possible for a base like 2 or some other things. Then x raised to the power 8, x raised to the power 4, x raised to the power 2, x raised to the power 1. Like, can I say this thing very clearly? That for any value x which is greater than or equal to 2, there can be no subset which follows that pattern, which follows the given pattern with the length greater than this thing. Anna, can I say this thing? Yes, I can say this thing very easily. So we have just understood one thing that the sub, like the subsets, the sub, uh, subsets which follow this pattern cannot be very large and what do you think what do you think uh, if i am being given like if i want to check if a pattern like 2 raised to the power 
like here just imagine that x was equal to 2 for this pattern if i want to find out whether it is present inside the array or not for x equal to 2 how can i check it what do i want i want that 2 raised to the power 1 the frequency or the number of times 2 raised to the power 1 comes in the array should be at least greater than or equal to 2 similarly the frequency of 2 raised to the power 2 should be greater than or equal to 2 similarly for 2 raised to the power 3 also the frequency should be greater than or equal to 2 2 raised to the, for 2 raised to the power 4 as well the frequency should be greater than or equal to 2 and for 8 as well the frequency should be greater than or equal to 2 in the given array only then you can only then you can choose two occurrences of 2 raised to the power 1 two occurrences of 2 raised to the power 2 from the array two occurrences of 2 raised to the power 4 okay sorry i made one blender here it is 2 raised to the power 4 not 2 raised to the power 3 and 2 raised to the power 8 and later on you see that for 2 raised to the power for 2 raised to the power 16 you need only one occurrence so can you notice such pattern here that if I know x is equal to 2, I can just find out the largest, the largest subset possible with this kind of a pattern by doing something like this. I will just check that how many times I will just say that please tell me how many times 2 raised to the power 1 is coming. If it is coming greater than or 2, uh, like more than or equal to 2 number of times, then I know that. In the pattern, I can have 2 raised to the power 1 at the two ends of my subset. I will just then check for the number of times 2 raised to the power 2 is coming. Now, let's see 2 raised to the power 2 is also coming more than or equal to 2 number of times in the given array. Uh, let's say my array was something like 2, 2, 4, 4, 4, 8. So, I see that 4 is coming 3 number of times. That is 2 raised to the power 2 is coming four number of 3 number of times. I can just have it at the uh, like I can just take out two of its occurrences and place it inside my subset. Then I would care about two raised to the power three. That is eight. How many times eight is coming? You will see that eight is coming only one number of times. So you have only one possibility for it. You can just keep it into the center. And now even if sixteen was coming up, let's say two number of times, you still cannot use these sixteens because uh, the pattern just stopped here. Uh, if you wanted to have 16 inside your subset, then you require two occurrences of x raised to the power 8 or 2 raised to the power 8, which you don't have right now. So the pattern will just stop here. Sorry, not that 16, 16 is 2 raised to the power 4 here. Okay, sorry. I think again I made one blender uh, in the explanation, like a very small mistake made by me in the explanation. Let me uh, repeat this thing once again. Though I think you would have got the main idea. Uh, the mistake I made was that it should have been, the array should have been 2, 2, 4, 4, 4, 16, 16. And let's say the array is something like this thing. The array is something like this. Now from what we have understood till now, guys, please try to pause the video and try to think what should be the answer here. What can I do when if I decide that uh, I will pick up a subset where x is equal to 2? If I decide this thing. I hope you pause the video and try to try to think about it. You would have got that hey, 2 is coming 2 number of times. If I want to have x is equal to 2 in, uh, in this kind of a pattern, then I can just place 2 at the first and the last place in my subset. Then you see 4 is coming 3 number of times. You require only 2 occurrences. So you will just see that I will take out 2 of these occurrences and place them at the corners of the uh, subset. Then you have 16 coming up only 1 number of times. So can you say that I will again have 16 here? No, you cannot say something like this. Because 16 is coming up only 1 number of times. You would have to place it into the center and end the uh, pattern here. The 16 is now acting up as that 
x raised the power k element which was coming up only one number of time if you see in the problem statement you had x raised the power k coming up only one number of time 16 is that element so i hope that this thing makes complete sense now that how you would get once you know that what is the uh, starting element what is the smallest element of that subset that x we are talking about in that case you can just figure out the length of the subset here the length of the subset turns out to be 5 now uh, we will move on to the place where we don't know about x but before that i would like to take up one more example what if the array look like this 2 2 4 4 16 16 what should be the answer try to pause the, like pause the video and try to think about it this is like you might make a mistake at this kind of a, an example a silly mistake so i hope that you pause the video and try to think about it uh, one thing would have been obvious that you will just pick up the twos from the beginning and place them at the corners okay let's make this example a little more weird let's take 4 is coming for number of time, number of times and 16 is coming two number of times so uh, for the first two like these two it was clear that you would just place them at the corners for the 4 and 4 it is again like for this thing also there is no confusion you would just place it at the ends now will you place 4 and 4 like this can you place it I hope that you didn't make such kind of a silly mistake. You cannot place it because uh, it will not be equal to x two raised to the power four. I know because here two raised to the power two should have been coming and here two raised to the power four should have been coming. So this is not equal to two raised to the power four. That's why you cannot place four again. Like all the occurrences of four you have after two occurrences is just waste. There is nothing you can do with it. Okay. Uh, what happened here? Okay. Now see next thing, another mistake which somebody could have made is maybe you just imagine that you would place, since you have two occurrences of 16, you just place them at the two ends. So yeah, we had been, we had been doing this thing. But now notice that you don't really have another element to place at the center. You don't have a 256, uh, 256 is nothing but 2 raised to the power 8. You don't have a 2 raised to the power 8 to uh, place at the center. Since you don't have an element to act as x raised to the power k, you cannot place it. Thus, at the end, when you see that you don't really have any occurrence of 2 uh, like 256, you would have to remove one of the 16s from here. And your subset will now become this. So even though you had one more occurrence of 16, but since you did not have a 16 square present in the array, so you can st just use only one of them, even now. And here the answer is still 5. So if you got the answer as 5 for the uh, given input, when you pause the video, I think you have understood uh, on how we will get or how we will decide what can be the maximum length for a subset where we have decided what is the value of x. Now there is one more observation you could make. The first element is x, the second element becomes x square, and so on. Now, if this x is smaller than 1e4, like smaller than or equal to 1e4, uh, maybe not like ju just this thing, but uh, square root of 1e9 basically. If this x is less than or equal to square root of 10 raised to the power 9, in that case, x square would be less than or equal to 10 raised to the power 9. So, this kind of a subsequence is possible for uh, all x which are less than or equal to 10 raised to the power 9. But if but if x is greater than equal sorry just greater than 10 raised to the power 9 or square root of 10 raised to the power 9, in that case x square would be greater than 10 raised to the power 9. So in that case a sub a subset like x x square x would not be possible and uh, there would be only one possible subset for that x that is just the single element which will have a length one uh, which you would obviously have as the minimum possible answer because 
uh, if there had been any element present in the array, you could just take up that single element and you will have uh, a subset of length one which follows the pattern. So I think you would have got the idea. The main thing here which I wanted you to notice here is that if x is greater than square root n, square root of 10 is the power 9, in that case, it makes no sense to consider or try to find out the maximum subarray, the length of the sub, sorry. Uh, there, it makes no sense to find out the longest subset which follows the pattern. Because it would be only one. You know? It doesn't make any sense to consider for those x. Good enough. So we have got this thing. Now, we have considered what we have to do if x is greater than or equal to 2. And in case if it is less than, like till less than or equal to 10 to the power 9. For this part, we have understood that we can just find out the answer in this method. What we can do is, we can let's say initialize a variable with name, let's say d, which is initially equal to x. And then we can just check out the frequency of this d. There can be three possibilities. It, its frequency is equal to 0, its frequency is equal to 1, or its frequency is greater than or equal to 2. Uh, if you remember, it doesn't matter how much it is, once it is greater than or equal to 2. Because even if it is greater, like more than 2, it doesn't really create any difference like this example. In the case when the frequency of D is 1, I think it should be intuitive for you to understand that it will act as the x raised to the power k of the pattern, basically the middle element of the array, uh, of the set, subset. It will act as the middle element of the subset. Which means that, like this thing means that uh, the count, oh, sorry, not the count, but uh, length of the subset will increase by one and you would not check for any other, like you would not check for x raised to the power 2, okay, something like that. Huh? It is the middle element, so the pattern has ended. You will just break whatever loop you would be running. If the um, frequency of that D element is greater than or equal to 2. In that case, you will say the length has increased by 2. The length has increased by 2. And now you will have um, D equal to D square. For the next iterations of the loop, you will now consider D as D square. Basically, it is like you just placed x and x at the corners and now the next element which you would place is x square. So as we had said that we have just assumed that d is equal to x. So we will say that now d is equal to d square which is nothing but x square. Later on for uh, uh, if you place this element as well after that you would be willing to place x to the power 4. So you can just keep saying that d is equal to d square again and again and again for every next iteration of uh, every next iteration where you would have to place an element. And uh, this thing should be clear that what you will do here is just increase the length of the subset by 2 and uh, set the d is equal to d square for the next element. And uh, you will again go into the next iteration of the loop. And in the case where you found that the element is not present, uh, one thing is clear that the previous element, which would have been under root D, it would have been, it would have become the middle element in the last time. It would have been coming at least two number of times and you would have increased the length by two. As we saw in this case that uh, where 16 was coming multiple number of times, what we had done when we were checking for 16, we had just placed it twice and we were looking for the next element which was not present. Here, 256 was not present. So what we, what we did we do? We just said that, hey, remove the 16. That's it. We just said that remove one of the uh, elements, 
one of the 16 and that's it that became an answer so what are we doing here we will just say that remove one of the elements which you had placed earlier that is just remove um, that element which makes length uh, decrease by one and you just break now you can just break that's it so these are the cases we have got for uh, x being in this range and if x is greater than 10 raised to the power 9 under root 10 raised to the power 9 in that case the answer is simple that we don't really have to consider anything because the only possible subset would be x it would have a length of 1 and we know that all the subsets we have been already covering would uh, have got the answer greater than or equal to 1. 1 would have been the least, the smallest possibility. So you don't really have to worry about it. Or if, if you want, you can just initialize answer with 1. You can just initialize answer by 1 at the beginning and uh, there is no problem then. In case if there is any element which is greater than this. So there is no problem with it. It's cool. Now what if x equal to 1? This is the case which we have not considered so far. Now this case is the easiest one so far. Let's say you are having 1 coming up in the array. C and T one number of times. So what can you do? What, like, what you can do is place 1 at the corners. Again place 1 at the corners as long as the count is greater than or equal to 2. Eventually, the count will either become a, become 0 or 1. You know, since you are using 1, 1, like 2, 2 occurrences every time, eventually, it will become equal to 1 or 0. If the frequency becomes equal to 0, let's say you had the frequency at the start equal to 6. Initially, the count of the number of 1s in the subset were equal to 6. In the array were equal to 6. Uh, if you remember, you want to have x raised to the power 1 come x raised to the power k coming up one number of time. Basically, this thing would be odd. It is gonna have a length of odd. You can verify this thing. So it is not possible to have even number of elements. It would make x x raised to the power 2, x raised to the power 4, x raised to the power 4, x raised to the power 2, x raised to the power 2. Right now, this is how our set is looking. We cannot have the maximum power coming up twice. So we would have to remove one of them. And in case if count was odd, in that case, there is no problem. It would uh, just have been coming up in the middle only once. So in a nutshell, for the case where x is equal to 1, the thing is, x raised to the power 1, x raised to the power 2, x raised to the power 4, everything is just 1. All of these things are equal to 1, so our subset will just look like 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, coming up in the whole subset. How many times will it come? If count 1 is odd, in that case, there will be C and D1. Basically, all the ones can be used. But if count of 1 is E1, then you can use count 1 minus 1 number of ones in the subset. You cannot use all of them because it would... Uh, not follow the pattern in that case if you use all of them and now i think that it should be completely clear i have um, i have literally explained even the small details uh, completely from like in the beginner friendly way so yeah that's it we have covered up all the cases for this so if x is equal to 1 we know how to do this if x is greater than 2, equal to 2, and uh, x is less than equal to square root of 10 raised to the power 9, or in simple words, like, uh, or in simple thing for coding, you can just say that x into x is less than equal to 10 raised to the power 9. It is the same thing uh, than the last time, saying x is less than equal to square root of it, square root of 10 raised to the power 9. We know what to do. And for all x greater than 10 raised to the power 9, you don't do, have to do anything. Like, don't do anything. So, that's how our logic looks. Now, let me make the code a little different. 
so that it follows our logic. First of all, we are initializing answer by one as we had been, uh, as we had decided. Yeah, I did code it in a little different way, but now I'm just making up some little modifications to make it look as similar to the observe uh, explanation as possible. First of all, we are having the array. Now we have created a map uh, to keep track of the frequency of all elements. So whatever we had been saying as CND of val in the explanation, which was telling me about the frequent frequency of or the number of times this val is coming in the array, it would be denoted as empty dot val, empty val in the code of mine. We have we named it. We have named it as m. This is the case for the number of ones I will have. Uh, maybe I can just say max. Just keep it as similar as the explanation. After that, uh, we are running up a loop from two to uh, two to uh, under root, like square root of one ten is the point. Yeah, I'm back. Uh, and after that, instead of using a variable with name D as being explained in the um, explanation, here in the code I have used a variable num, uh, which I initialized with i. And uh, instead of the variable with name length in the explanation, here, here I have named it as cnt. So while num is less than or equal to 10 is the power 9, I'm checking its frequency. I can make up this change also. Uh, just a second. Yeah. So now it is exactly similar to the explanation. In case if the count is zero, then what we are doing is just in decrementing the count and breaking the loop. Uh, by the way, if some element doesn't come in the map, you can check it as mp dot find num equal to equal to um, mp dot end. In case if the element is not present, it will return you this address. So you can check it in this way. Uh, if you normally if you use the normal way like mp num like this, what it will do is just it will uh, create some key value pair in the map where the key being equal to num and the value being equal to zero, even though it was not useful for us. So it just makes the thing slower. It just makes things slow. That's why it is recommended to use this way whenever you want to check if some element is not coming in the map or whether it is coming. After this, you can have this. Uh, this is the case that in case if the frequency is greater than or equal to two, then count will be incremented by two and the number would be uh, now equal to number into number or maybe you can just write it as this thing or you can write it as this. Both are the same thing. And in the else condition, we are just incrementing and breaking. This else condition is for the case, this one. If it is coming up only once at the end and uh, for whatever count you got or whatever length you got for the current x or the current i uh, in the explanation I used the variable i x here. We will just say that hey answer is equal to maximum of answer and account and uh, just return answer at the end. So that's it. I hope the problem is clear. And yeah this this was a little harder or maybe significantly harder than what usually comes in the B problem. You can see that uh, it got so many submissions and very less were accepted. Generally, this doesn't happen in the B problem of late code. Uh, it was equivalent to what generally comes in the C problem, I believe. And C problem is relatively easier. In the C problem, we have been given, uh, okay, first of all, the name is Elias and Bob playing flower game. In the problem, we have been given that Alice and Bob are playing a turn-based game on a circular field surrounded by flowers. The circle represents the field 
and there are x flats in the clockwise direction and uh, y flats in the anti clockwise direction so if you take if you take uh, allies here and bob here in a circular field so in the clockwise direction there are x flats and in the anti clockwise direction there are y flats now someone might argue that what if i say that i am considering the clockwise direction from the bob side so there should be x here and y here now this is uh, uh, like a valid argument the problem has not clarified this uh, completely that in which direction should you consider x and in which direction should you consider y so for now i'm just uh, having it in the explanation that this is the clockwise direction in this way and anti clockwise like this having x and y flowers at the end you will realize it doesn't matter and the game proceeds at for as follows allies takes the first turn in the turn player must choose either clockwise or anti clockwise direction and pick up one flower from that side so if there were three flowers like this and two flowers here allies can either choose to go in the clockwise direction like not go there but just pick up uh, an element from the clockwise direction and take this flower with itself with herself just one flower and then it would be bob's turn and so on and it has been given that at the end of the turn if there are no flowers left at all the current player captures the opponent and wins the game so just imagine if um, allies plays her turn she uh, takes this flower then bob places his turn he takes this flower then allies takes this one bob takes this one and allies takes this one so after five moves allies made the last move and uh, Uh, on the fifth move, when she removed this flower, now there are no flowers left in the game. So, in this case, Alice will capture Bob and Alice will win. Alice will be the winner. Now, in the problem statement, again, I am not happy with this thing that they have not really mentioned it completely. Like, like they should have clarified this thing. What do they? What do they mean by if no flowers are left at all? Whether they mean about the flowers in the direction or all of the flowers, since they have not really mentioned this part, we are assuming that they are talking about uh, the case where all the flowers uh, on both the directions are uh, taken. So let me make write it again plainly. Alice is here. Bob is here. There is one direction which has x flowers, other direction has y flowers. In the uh, like, whoever's turn it is, will have to make a move, whether it this side or at this side, choose a flower and take it. Once at some point of time, all of the flowers are being taken. In that case, that player will win. Now, one more thing they have not mentioned here is. that if you choose the clockwise just imagine that you choose the clockwise direction and there is no flower at that side since it asks us to pick up one flower from there but what to do if there is no flower it has also not been mentioned by lead code i don't know i don't really know why and how can uh, they leave ambiguity in the problem like generally lead code gives very good problems but here is some ambiguity in the problem uh, for now i am assuming that a player cannot make a move let's say if there are there were two flowers and both of them are taken taken and there is some flowers left here then allies cannot go to this side allies cannot pick uh, choose this direction i am assuming this thing because they have not really mentioned this part and we have been told that we are being given to integers n and m and the task is to compute the number of possible pairs x comma y that satisfies the condition allies must win a game according to the described rules okay one more thing which i want to discuss before that is just notice one part since 
in every turn in one turn like let's see what happens in one turn a player will pick up a flag since it doesn't matter from where it picked it the only thing matters is that it is picking up a flag there were a total of x plus y number of flags and as soon as it becomes zero there is some error right so the thing is if i say f is equal to the number of flags i have initially which is x plus y after every turn f will red, reduce by 1 so this is initial and this is after every turn f will reduce by 1 and at the end when f becomes 0 when f becomes 0 the last guy who made the move will win the person or the player who played the last turn or removed the last flower who played the last turn or you can say remove the last flower will win hai na so since like if we already know what is the value of f now it doesn't matter in which way the two players play the answer is always going to be the same the winner is always going to be the same now see if there is only one flag let's say that there is only one flag f equal to 1 after ali's turn after ali's turn f will become equal to 0 and ali's will win in case if f was equal to 2 then after ali's turn f will equal to f will become equal to 1 and bob will after bob's turn f will become equal to 0 and bob will win right similarly you can check for f equal to 3 f equal to 4 and f equal to 5 and so on you will see that allies will win in the cases where the number of flags is odd odd like you can verify this thing it is very easy to do you will just notice that if the number of flags if the number of given flags is odd then allies will win allies wins and we have to in the problem we have been given some n and an integer m there we want to find out the number of pairs x comma y where x is in the range from 1 to n 1 to n and y is in the range from 1 to m and allies will win so indirectly the problem is asking us to find out the number of pairs x comma y where x is in the range 1 to n y is in the range from 1 to m and uh, uh, x plus y is odd i hope this thing makes sense that the problem is indirectly asking me to do this thing <clears throat> now this is uh, like the problem we have got so far from the problem statement we have simplified the problem to this much that you are being given two integers n and m you have to figure out the number of pairs x comma y such that these three conditions hold do you think that we have simplified the problem a lot now they had just given up some weird story to confuse us at the end of the day the problem was uh the only reason i think that you might have got confused on the problem statement can be because it has some ambiguities they have not really clarified the corner cases like uh, this case that what if there is no flower available in that direction what will we what will the player do or is he allowed to make that we want not so since it is not mentioned we just assume that he cannot make a move since he would not be able to complete the operation the thing which uh, he had to do if he chooses that direction so now coming back to this problem it is quite simple you see if x plus y is odd it clearly means that either x is odd and y is even either this thing should hold or or x is even and y is odd 
one of these conditions should hold and you want to find out the number of ways so the number of ways of these pairs and the number of ways of these pairs you can just add up both of them you you will get out all of the number of pairs x comma y so it is simple how many possibilities are there for x even like how many elements are there how many possible odd numbers can x be equal to and for y like just take this thing for a pair x comma y you want to find out the number of pairs where x is odd y is even and x is inside the range from 1 to n and y is in the range from 1 to n how many elements are there uh, how many odd elements are there in the first n natural numbers you will see that it is nothing but n by 2 rounded up it is a very simple thing it is just like school level mathematics you can figure this out yourself also um just imagine if n was equal to 1 in the first like just one natural number how many odd numbers are there there is only one natural number in the first two natural numbers there is only one odd number in first three odd natural num uh, in first three natural numbers there are two odd numbers which is nothing but n by 2 like if you see n by 2 for n equal to 3 it will give you 1.5 and if you up uh, like round it up in that case it will it will become 2 that is the number of uh, odd numbers in the first and natural numbers like you can verify that this formula will always work this many natural number odd numbers are there in the first and natural numbers and how many even numbers are there in the first and natural numbers it is nothing but m by 2 again this is a very simple thing you can verify this or you can just uh, see this like see some sort of pattern that in first two, one natural number there is none and first two natural numbers there is one even number first three natural numbers there is only one even number then first four natural numbers there are two even numbers and so on you can just figure this out like this so we just saw that like we can from this uh, easily figure out that the number of um, pairs like this one would be n by 2 rounded up into m by 2 in c plus plus by default it is rounded down i hope you know about this let's say if you do something like 7 by 2 in c plus plus you will get 3 not 3.5 it automatically rounds it out rounds it down and how will you round it up if you want to round it up you can say something like n plus 1 by 2 this will work here in general if you want to have something like a by b rounded up you can say a plus b minus 1, a plus b minus 1 upon b and c plus plus or anywhere where have things become rounded down by the itself. And this is a simple thing which you can also verify. I think this much explanation is enough there. So this is the number of ways you can get ordered pair, the number of pairs x comma y where x is odd, y is even and these are in this range. Similarly for x is even and y is odd, you can have n by 2 into m by 2 rounded up this many pairs and at the end just add both of them and that's our answer so i hope that this one should be clear now we have one minute break try to uh, just try to grasp all the things we have discussed for this problem and uh, it should be good enough i guess and then we will discuss the fourth problem So I hope this explanation did help you out. It did. I hope it did make sense. Now let me show you my code. Uh, let me move this. Yeah. So what I did is I just had a long, long integer being initialized at first. And then I added n plus 1 by 2 to figure out 
n plus 1 by 2 to know about the number of odd integers in the first n natural numbers multiplied with m by 2, which is the number of even in, in, integers in the first m natural numbers and similarly the other way around and uh, added both of these expressions to answer and then return answer. Simple. If you want, you can just write out this, both of these things together in one line and we will have a very cool one-liner solution for the problem. So that's it for the second problem. Now we will see the third problem. Uh, sorry, th this is the third problem. Now we will see the fourth problem. Maybe just close it. Yeah, this is the fourth problem. We will talk only about the intuition of this. I have not solved it yet. And once I solve this, I will uh, add the link, add the link of my submission into the description once I solve it. Okay, so the problem says that we are being given zero based, uh, zero indexed integer array norms and an integer k. And uh, in one operation, we can just choose any index i, which is not the last index, and replace the element on that index and the next element with a single occurrence of nums i and nums i plus one, where and is the bitwise and operator and return the minimum, like uh, this is what we can do in one operation and we have to return the minimum possible value of bitwise or of the remaining elements of nums after applying at most k operations. So I think that the problem is self-explanatory, like uh, the problem is like very clear. The problem statement is very clear that we have been given an array. We have been given an array nums. In one operation, what you can do is just choose some index i and replace the element and its next element by nums i and nums i plus 1. By this thing, you can replace both these elements. So if you had elements like 2, 7, 3, 4, if this was an array and you had chosen this element, in that case, you will replace both these elements by the bitwise AND of 7 and 3, which would come out to be um, 3 in this case. Like 7 is nothing but 1, 1, 1 in bit binary form and 3 is nothing but 0, 1, 1. So the bitwise and is just one one. And the new array will become two. Uh, just one minute. Yeah. The new array will become two, three, four. You can perform at most k operations. And what you want to do is you want to minimize. bitwise or of all elements of all remaining elements maybe we can we should say like this if of all remaining elements in the array so let's say here k was equal to 1 and i could only make up one operation so if i make if i made that one operation after this the bitwise or of all these elements is 7 because 1 is nothing but 0, 1, 0 in bitwise form, uh, sorry, binary form. 3 is 0, 1, 1 and 4 is 1, 0, 0. So the bitwise or of all these elements will turn out to be 7. If I could make one more operation, if I had k equal to 2, in that case, I could have maybe chosen these two elements and had got the array 2, 0. Since the bitwise and of 3 and 4 is just 0. So the bitwise or of the array at the end will turn out to be just 2, which is 0 and 0. So I hope that the problem is clear. We want to minimize this thing. So one very obvious, like one thing which should be very obvious to you is, since the problem is related to bitwise operation, like it is having bitwise operation, think about the problem in binary. in binary form. Just think about the bits 
of the numbers. Now there is one claim, like one thing which should come up to our mind is whether should I prefer MS like doing something about MSB over LSB or not? Maybe not so clear right now. Let's see one more thing before it. Since I want to minimize the bitwise or of the array, let's say array is something like seven zero eight, something like this, and k is equal to one. You can make only one operation. So should you choose this thing as the one of in for the one operation or this thing? This is the question I'm having for you. Should I do this or this? If I choose seven zero, um, like if I replace seven zero by their bitwise end, which would come out to be zero, then the array I will have is zero comma eight. In the other case, the array will be seven comma zero. So here you see that uh, this thing will have a bitwise OR of 8 and this will have a bitwise OR of 7. Even though when I chose when I chose the 7 and 0, the uh, like the two numbers were like this 0, 1, 1, 1 and 0, 0, 0. So bitwise and turn out to be 0, 0. I got rid of three of the bits from this number. But still the and is like the bit I saw at the end is coming out to be larger. Whereas in this case, I only got rid of one bit. Eight is nothing but this thing and zero is nothing but this thing. The and turns out to be zero. I got only rid of one bit, but that one bit had more value than all the other bits, which is kind of obvious that if you have a number like one triple zero or a number like zero one one, this, this number is larger. No, this number is larger. So having your focus towards the more significant bit of the number makes more sense than um, trying to remove one of these bits. Right. So we, uh, we can just like this is one of the ways of confirming just to confirm that should I focus more on the more significant bit or the least significant, like it doesn't matter whether it matters or not. So what I can do is I can just say that what is the most significant bit of the all the numbers? Can I make it equal to zero? If I have numbers like eight, one, two, three, I should focus. Uh, like let's first of all see the numbers in binary form. It is like one triple zero. Triple zero one. Yeah, I'm back. So the numbers are one triple zero, triple zero one, zero zero one zero, or zero zero one one. So these are the numbers. I should focus to get rid of this most significant bit. Uh, Wait a second. Yeah. Yeah. So I should prefer to get rid of this most significant bit first. These bits of other numbers is not my concern for now. This should be the first step. This should be the first step that hey, I will try to make the first bit equal. Um, make the first bit equal to zero. How can I make it equal to zero? I can just have it come in bitwise and operation with some number which doesn't have that bit. Right, something like that. We can uh, see it later on. So this was one main uh, observation. This was a necessary observation and you should at least know this much. Like from this problem, you should at least learn this much. The second thing is, Let's say um, I traverse over all the bits in this order. J equal to 30. J is greater than 0 and J minus minus. 
like uh, since the numbers can be as large as two raised to the power thirty. Even this thirtieth bit will never come. So you can just move on like this, and you can create some mask, some integer with the well with the mask or anything. In which you will store the bits which you have managed to remove, and what you can say is, just imagine I found that within k operations, within k number of operations, you can remove this bit. Just store this thing inside a variable mask. That hey, I can remove the bit with the like I can just remove this. This bit, whatever bit you can remove, just store it inside. Just set it inside your mask, so that you will know that hey, I can remove this bit. And now for the other bits, like um, you have already checked for this bit. Now check for this bit. That in any number wherever if it is coming, can you get rid of this bit from all the numbers within k number of operations such that This bit is also being removed at the same time. Like the condition of this being this bit being removed should not be violated. Just in case, if you are able to remove the second bit, like it doesn't come in the problem for now. Just imagine if we talk about the bit with index one, like this one. If it is possible to remove this bit or not, while making sure that this bit is being removed. We are using a mask variable just to make sure that thing that we know which bits should definitely be removed. For every iteration, you have to find out the number of um, operations you require. The number of operations you require to remove the jth bit. Since we are having the loop with j, I'm using the word j a bit. While all the bits in mask are also removed. You should make this thing also sure. Now I'm um, like um, I already know that this thing will not be completely clear by right now. uh it is a little complicated thing uh but i think that the intuition like you can get the intuition from it. obviously you will have to spend a lot of time on by yourself even now uh to figure out that how to do this thing. now the part of how to do this thing i have not done it yet so not really sure about the thing which is coming to my mind so we are not discussing about how to find out the number of Or the minimum number of operations required to do this thing. Like I'm not really sure if, uh, like how to do this thing. I've not implemented it yet. But uh, like this is something you have to figure out yourself. You can take help of the tutorial or the hints given in the need for problems. Just imagine you found it to be M N equal to M N. Now you can just Compare M N with K. If the minimum number of moves required to remove all those characters and the current bit is less than or equal to K, in that case, you will say that K mask like in the mask which we had created, just add on. You can say it like this that mask or One left shift, left shift J. Basically, the jth bit. You are setting the jth bit in the mask now, because you now know that you can remove all these bits. There is some way to remove all this these bits within K operations. Now, um, only one part is remaining for the problem. Like for the other parts, I believe that things would either be clear or you would have got very good intuition there. Now, this this problem is actually. Not so simple. This is not a very simple thing to do. Uh, I would try to give the solution as soon as possible in the description. Uh, for now, 
this part is something we have not covered in the video and you can check out uh, you can check out uh, the editorial on leak code for this part and in case uh, by the time you're watching the video if i've already given up my solution in the description for the problem then like you can just check it out i would add comments there to uh, explain that how i am putting that part and once you are done with all this uh, you are done with the whole loop you would have all the bits which you can make and set uh, you can make and set from the given array all of those bits would be set in mask so the answer is nothing but the bitwise like just find out the bitwise or of all elements in the array or of the array and then and set all bits which are set in mask and uh, now whatever number you get is your answer so i hope that you got some intuition this uh, for the deep problem we have not talked about the complete solution uh, but i hope that you got uh, the intuition and uh, thank you for watching the video i would try to give up my solution as soon as i do this problem in the uh, in the description so you can check it out there and uh, bye bye